So what I want to do here is quickly show you what's going to happen uh, in the practicals. And to do that best, I want to be able to share content on a power <clears throat> PowerPoint deck. The PowerPoint deck that I uh, share with you, I will put it across into Microsoft Teams so you'll be able to see it. Um, I want to make sure that you can do a practical with me that puts me on the street in search of discovery points that I would show you if we were walking on the street ourselves. And those points are important because they would have been here in Clonmel in 1918 during the last pandemic. You're helping to survive the current pandemic, but back then there were things that we can see by flying through them today, and I'll point out some of them to you, and then on the day itself, there'll be a, a room that you'll see on Zoom. I'll send invitations to everybody to join a Zoom room. The number is on the screen, and it'll be on an email coming to you, 386-174-3369, which happens to be the same as the my phone number, really close to my phone number. We'll do a Zoom tour. I'll walk it, and if you have questions, I'll stop and answer them. One of the tours ought to be accompanied by an archaeologist, John Tierney. You could ask me to stop and get really close to something that you want to annotate as an artifact or something that relates to an object you put into your sketch notebook. Or you may want to refer to the thing you see while answering a question you have to answer in November about surviving the pandemic. And then I'm hoping that some of you will share what you're focusing on about this item as an audio on Swell or as a note inside your notebook. So I use Google Earth before I do anything, and I'm going to just play you a sample of that. So I would ask Google Earth first to tell me more about the space I'm going to walk on. So I want to start where people used to sell their horses at the end of World War II. It's near the showgrounds. Today it's a shopping center, some of you may know about. And the lay of the land, pretty much the same back as it was in 1918, except a whole lot more houses and buildings between the old showground and the river. It was, there, was a, there was a lot more marshland in this area back then. And I'm not too sure what left and right, fore and aft at this moment would have been there in 1918. I'm not an archaeologist, so I'm not a historian, but there are things I can spot based on the shape of the buildings, the chimney pots overhead, the archways. So here's one coming up. Not O'Keefe, the furniture company that lost its roof during high winds, but across the street, Kickham Barracks, where some of you catch a bus. Big archway there where the horses would go in. The caissons would, came rolling out. And there's a large... Officers met through that area. That's a historical building. And then there's a chapel further down the street. You can see the steeple, all of it. And all the, the soldiers would have met in that chapel and had observations of, of passing any, any deaths that occurred with the, the officers and the enlisted station there would have happened there in that church. And surprisingly today, in that archway to the right, there's a mortician, a mortuary officer who was retiring. So... That's of interest to people looking at how the local area is set up. Now we're, we're crossing over a mini roundabout, which used to be a river tributary going towards the Shure. And I want to go down towards the river now on Anglesey Street. The big, there are several big in, interesting premises on the street, primarily to the right, uh, Scotch Hall. It's an old, an old church, big columns, um, lovely features, big windows inside. There have been art exhibits there and had a fire. It used to be a furniture shop, but it definitely was there in 1918. Now, if we were doing this as a Zoom tour, you could ask me to stop and take a picture or get closer to the columns and say, hey, that's a discovery point. Along the way here, anything with a large curved archway is probably an entranceway to a muse or to where horses were stationed behind the big Georgian home. So that's a muse there, the blue one door going to uh, an area where the horses would have been stabled and as we go towards the river here and then turn to the right 
Uh, this key would have been lapping water pretty much where the Tarm Academy is here. Um, the building on the right, as we could up here, is Kamita. And that's an old it's a Georgian house. It's a Quaker house. It's a lovely place to work. And I, if I can talk to the owner, I'll ask to go in and take a, do some video inside that building. But then the brown sandstone is actually the parking lot of Kamita. And that's where the horses would be. And then the, the common people supporting the Quaker families were back there where the cars are parked. Further down, the Ivy building you see, oh, wait a minute, first of all, there's a big archway that is quite interesting. It's a preserved feature of um, a financial services building today and a hospice. And the horses would go back there. The horses and the travel of the day, no cars back then, boats on their left, and the river wall now prevents you from seeing how the boats would have been tied up holding grain and uh, products from a dairy. This is Benchy Law today. It used to be the Bagwell house, the family town home. The Bagwell's own Marfield. And this is where they would go in to just hang out with the locals when they left the farm in Marfield. I want to go up the street to the right, though, of uh, Benchy Law. And as you know, going up this small side street, uh, some of you might see a social welfare house. You might have used that, or some of you might live along here. But behind Benchy, uh, the parking lot was stable for the Bagwell family. And then some of these walls that are plastered over now are have remnants of the wall of Clonmel. Um, so as we do this Zoom tour, I'll be walking this slower, and you're meant to be able to pick out something, or John Tierney, if he's with me, will talk about what they see. This is the courthouse. Uh, representative structures would be the archways, the pitch of the roof, the windows. You're meant to be able to find things that somebody in 1918 would have walked next to, would have touched, would have interacted with. The South Tip Art Center wasn't there then. That's a bus station from the 1950s, now an art center. And we're coming up to an area where I'm sure a lot of you walk, which is uh, part of Parnell Street, where it used to be a subway, but now is a restaurant. It used to be a an augmented reality studio, and now it's uh, another restaurant. So now I'm going to see, can I go against traffic? Yeah, here we go. Against traffic, try not to hit anybody. Um, an old uh, town hall is there, which would have been present. The nationalist, the man, the nationalist, would not have been there in 1918, but he does represent the 1916 uh, fighters, uh, militia that, that left tip to fight in in Dublin. The Hearns Hotel is a stop off point for a major departure point for Bianconi's carriages. And then if you stop me along the way here, you can see that there's a style that you'd step on. Uh, I just pointed at um, a, a marking along the street that marks what Bianconi's carriageway did. And there's a pub up here on the right called the Coachman, which is from that time as well, where people would hang out and wait for the coaches to start. Oh, the blue office is no longer running. Fieldmaster is a really lovely art shop, or art supply place. Now you have to go to an industrial park to see your art supplies and fine stationary gear. Uh, old buildings known by the columns, the structure of the windows. Um, looking for fixtures that you'd say, you know what, I would have hung out here, not ate a sandwich on the street, but probably would have run into somebody in 1918 as we're going to and from the showgrounds to look at what's for sale. The horses, the cows, the pigs, um, the bread and other products. I think some of you might have used some of the fast food places along the side here, uh, maybe the Junction Cafe. There's a really nice ice cream parlor next to it now behind uh, the Mayfair Cafe and so forth. So I'll stop this video here, this little walkabout, and, um, yeah, go to the rest of the, the slide deck. So the practical, what happened, I'll be walking the same way inside the Zoom room, and I'm asking you to either find something during the practical. Now, you can walk this yourself, but we can't do it as a gaggle for uh, separation, COVID separation purposes. I would like you to observe what I do on Thursday and Friday. Interrupt me in Zoom by either primarily just shouting, you know, saying something, hey, can you stop there? Tell me more about this or show me that. So it's like as though you're, you're um, beaming into an event that's happening and you're doing it so that you can experience the setting and the environment. 
if you have enough in the way of a discovery point and you could respond to this audio clip that I have made about, do you have a discovery point from the last pandemic? That'd be handy because half a dozen of you responded to the last swell cast I put up and it was really good stuff. And people in the wider international community told me that they appreciated hearing primarily your accent as well as your observations. So this is a real question because it's a real essay question. You're surviving the pandemic is a question. And if you could go back in your own family history for people that were on the streets in 1918, if you had snippets of family history or an awareness of how people survived in the last pandemic and you were able to share it and it becomes part of the essay that you write, that's good. If you're able to share it beforehand as an audio comment that appears on Swell, that's worth one mark in the CA portion of media writing. And if you're timid about your voice and rather just share a note, a written note about it, put that inside your class notebook and I'll, I'll see it and award marks there. Okay. Everything I just mentioned is saved inside of Microsoft Teams. It's a stream. It's linked in Moodle to the media writing module and to the media writing teams area of our office 365 environment on the Clonmel digital campus. I also think it's important to go back in time using the open street map project and borrow some of the very rich heritage information that has been shared by advocates of OSM, the open street map. So, Thanks to John Tierney, the archaeologist, I discovered bits of work other people have done marking discovery points in Clonmel, places that you'd want to find if you were a heritage tourist or a culture vulture or somebody backpacking through your roots. Lots of Americans have Irish roots, and it really means a lot to be able to zero in on pieces of the landscape where there are stories that are parts of one's family heritage. Let's follow the Open Street Map Project through the uh, handiwork of a person that I think I saw behind the reception desk of Roth House. Here it is. Okay, it's Bernie Goldbach, and we're looking at the Open Street Map concept that's been shared with regard to a walkabout in Clonmel. Work was done by Anna Caroline Distel. You might know her from Roth House in Kilkenny. She walked along Nelson Street and she found herself in the realm of the Clonmel Courthouse. So I've extracted some work that she's done from YouTube and watched what she did in her YouTube tutorial with her Android phone while tracking her walkabout. She used a track logger called OSM Tracker for Android. And as she walked around, her phone recorded a trace in purple on a map. And it was up to her later to take the trace to find exact corners of buildings, features on the pavement, street furniture, and things that we will look at to make an awareness higher of what 1918 Clonmel would have been. What Aaron Caroline's doing is she's grabbing pieces of physical landscape and she's marking them as features that actually support the Hidden History Museum's displays because inside the Tipperary Museum are artifacts from many of these places. And then what you do if you follow this project is you can connect with it like several students from the presentation in secondary school are going to do. Grabbing the feature of a building or a piece of a plaque or a memorial or street furniture. And if you use the open street map metaphor, you mark these features where they are now and where they would have been back with old maps of 1918 Clonmel. So in this particular case, we're looking for where the courthouse is on a map that would put us in the pandemic era of the Spanish flu. We find the courthouse feature and click on it. We're not doing this in the creative media, of course. We're sketching features that may relate to the things that intersect with OpenStreetMap, the project, and the, the heritage objects that are around us virtually on maps and collections and actually by the physical space we see. 
I'm showing you what other people have done with OpenStreetMap because what we're doing, a simple walkabout, to find features that may be listed in OpenStreetMap all connect and coalesce in a nice collaborative way. So you can see what, the, what a, a user of OSM is doing, grabbing the courthouse, uploading all the features of the courthouse that she has recorded with latitude and longitude and specific place details. And if you do this with your features that you sketch, please make sure they're released under the Creative Commons share and share alike license. You can find work around Clonmel and the heritage buildings that have been mapped already by people by checking out openstreetmap.ie. I think it's a wonderful project, one we're going to be supporting with our Zoom walkabout. So we've had a fly through using an outline of the media writing stream in the Clonmel Digital Campus. Some really helpful work done by the OpenStreetMap project by Anna Carolyn. And let me share with you a hint of what this looks like when you accompany me, Bernie Topgold, on a walkabout down Davis Road, Anglesey Street, The Old Key, Nelson Street, Mitchell Street, and to the Old Guard. There will be links to everything I talked about here inside of Moodle, inside Microsoft Teams for media writing. I'm Bernie, Top Gold on Good Social Networks. Hope to see you making your discovery points and sharing a memory that you might have discovered the last time we survived a pandemic. Bye for now.